Hello, and welcome to this history tutorial on Stresemann's foreign policy in Germany between 1924 and 1929. This is for EdXL GCSE Weimar and Nazi Germany. Today we will cover the various different foreign policies which Stresemann introduced, what each of the policies were and the impact that these had on Germany. As you may already know, Gustav Stresemann had introduced a number of economic policies which led to the period 1924-29 being seen as a golden age in Germany. Stresemann also did a great deal of work in foreign affairs and the policies he introduced were designed to strengthen the confidence of the German people in the Weimar Republic. So let's just make clear what a foreign policy actually is before we look at the work of Stresemann. When we refer to a foreign policy, we are talking about how a country deals with other nations. So in this case, we are looking at the ways in which Germany worked with other nations between 1924 and 1929. Stresemann had become foreign minister in 1923, and as part of this role, he tried to cooperate more with countries and build better international relationships, particularly with allied countries such as Britain and France. The work that Stresemann did in foreign policy was a key reason why Germany's economy prospered in the years 1924-29. Under Stresemann, the first agreement that Germany signed was the Locarno Pact in December 1925. This was a treaty between Germany, France, Britain, Italy and Belgium. The thing about the Locarno Pact was that unlike the Treaty of Versailles, this pact was agreed by Germany on equal terms with the other main powers. It was not forced on Germany as the Treaty of Versailles had been. As part of the Locarno Pact, it was agreed that Germany would accept the borders set out in the Treaty of Versailles and France promised peace with Germany. Germany and the Allies also agreed that the Rhineland would remain free of troops. Stresemann viewed this agreement as a triumph for Germany. It made war less likely in Europe and Stresemann even won a Nobel Peace Prize for the work he did on this agreement. Germany was also being treated as an equal. This boosted the prestige of the Weimar Republic as people in Germany started to have more confidence in the government. However, not everyone in Germany believed this was a success. Some extreme parties, such as the Nazis, resented the fact that the borders laid out in the Treaty of Versailles had been confirmed. The work that Stresemann undertook on the Locarno Pact led to Germany being invited to join the League of Nations in 1926. This was a new international group that was founded as part of the Treaty of Versailles. It was a group of powerful countries that came together to discuss ways of solving the world's problems without resorting to war. Initially, Germany had been excluded from this group, but in September 1926, Stresemann persuaded the other nations to accept Germany as a member. Germany was in fact given a place on the League of Nations Council, which took the most important decisions of the League. Again, this was a major boost to the prestige of the Weimar Republic and the moderate political parties that supported Stresemann. And yet again, this boosted the confidence of ordinary Germans in the government. But, some, such as the Nazis, believed that the League was a symbol of the hated Treaty of Versailles and they wanted nothing to do with it. The final policy you need to be aware of is the Kellogg-Briand Pact of August 1928. Germany and 61 other countries signed this pact, which promised that countries would not use war to achieve foreign policy aims. This was another step forward for Germany in terms of foreign relations. In contrast to the Treaty of Versailles, it showed that Germany was now included amongst the main powers and not simply dictated to. It also showed that the Weimar Republic was a respected and stable state, which again boosted German people's confidence in their government. But, as you guessed, this pact was not supported by all political parties in Germany. Extremist parties did not like the fact that this pact did nothing to remove the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. In summary, Stresemann as Foreign Minister was responsible for several agreements with other countries that boosted the prestige of the Weimar Republic and built confidence in the government amongst ordinary Germans. He believed that Germany needed to cooperate with other countries and be seen as a leading nation again before any further discussions on the Treaty of Versailles occurred. Moderate parties and the general public were supportive of Stresemann's foreign policies, 
But it is important to remember that extremist parties were against these, as they disliked the fact that none of these new agreements with other nations challenged the terms laid out to Germany in the Treaty of Versailles. In 1924 and 1929, the views of these extremist parties had little impact because the economy was doing so well. However, after the Wall Street crash, these views became more detrimental to the government. To get further help, visit history.outward.com, see your teacher in school, or check out quiz.outward.com for those sweet revision quizzes. You can also follow the Outward Humanities team on Twitter at OGAT Humanities. Until next time, that was a little bit of history.